Gambit lovers, today I am going to tell you that you should fall into a trap. And let me tell you what I mean. So in D4 Knight F6, in C4 I've advised a new uh, Gambit in the Budapest Gambit. But today we're going to talk about the Jobava London. Gaining in popularity where it plays Knight C3 on the second move to try and play E4. We stop them. And Bishop to F4. And... Here I'm going to advise to you what I believe is literally the worst move on the chessboard. Uh, it is the lowest scoring move percentage wise and is the one move where we can invite our opponent to cause some excitement in the position instead of just allowing them to play knight out and castle their king. We are going to play here knight to c6 and you might be able to tell why this is a blunder or you might be able to check the database of what people are overwhelmingly playing in this position and what they should overwhelmingly be playing. Knight to b5 more than plus one because it's attacking c7 uh, and here we must play pawn to e5 to stop knight captures on c7 because immediately with knight c6 we no longer have knight to a6 to defend this pawn and our bishop's still here we can't even play rook c8 we can't even play bishop d6 or check and come back we must play e5 gambiting a pawn which let's be fair we wanted to do anyway and after d takes e5, uh, overwhelmingly played, I'll also get to bishop takes e5. But after d takes e5, not knight h5, which is going to be looking uh, a little bit like a fried liver sort of situation. But here white can just play e3, uh, now attacking our knight, takes takes, and here white is just doing uh, completely fine. It's pretty much just a pawn ahead. Instead, I will be advising you to play the very ambitious knight to e4. Knight to e4, and knight's going to be doing so excellent there, and it's going to be driving so many threats on f2, and it's going to be helping us give some uh, killer checks along this diagonal by controlling some great squares here. Okay, but the issue is that our opponent just took this pawn and wants to reopen the bishop onto c7 so that they can play knight takes c7 check and win uh, our rook here. So they're going to play, overwhelmingly, pawn to e6. And now here, um, players with black are getting desperate. You see bishop d6 or knight d6. Uh, after which black is just completely lost um, to, you know, because they're very desperate to hang on to c7. But instead, this is a gambiting channel. You know we are not going to be defending c7. Bishop takes e6, inviting our opponent to play knight takes c7 check. King must move. And here I'm going I'm to get back to a couple things, but let me just show the main line here first. With knight takes rook. And now overwhelmingly here, people are just being like, okay, I lost a rook, it is what it is, let me at least get the knight. However, little does white know that they have fallen completely into our trap. Because now we play queen to f6, and white is lost. White is actually <laughs> completely lost in this position, and it's just crazy. Because, uh, I mean, white's got no development done. All they've done is move their knight, they move their pawn. You see they've gotten nothing out here on this whole side of the board. Right now, we want to, in addition to take the bishop... We want to take b2. Uh, if you guys are fans of this channel, you'll know from the Von Popiel Gambit or from the uh, unnamed Budapest Gambit that queen f6 to attack these things is one of my favorite ideas. Um, but bishop to b4 check is coming and, and white's just going to lose. So for example, let's follow, continue to follow the most common lines. So bishop to g3. So getting the bishop out of the way while also not blundering checkmate here. But we just play bishop to b4 check. It's, it's crazy. There's six games here. Only, only one person has found bishop to b4 check. It's forced mate. It's forced mate. Black has actually played brilliantly, but, but they haven't even realized. So so c3 takes, takes, queen takes, queen d2. This is just checkmate. It's just checkmate. And bishop to g3 uh, isn't the only option, but everything loses. So we can look here at bishop to e3. Um, and here, after just uh, queen takes b2, or I think a lot of things win. Bishop to b4 check is winning. So bishop d2 being impossible, white would have to lose the queen here. Uh, so c3, but instead we just take it, queen takes c3, bishop d2 is forced, and here we're just going to take the rook uh, next turn once this queen is forced to move. Otherwise we have knight f3, which is going to be double check mate. Pawn to e3 is also possible here. Uh, it really does not change much. We play uh, again bishop to b4 check. Pawn c3. Of course, we sacrifice, and here white actually needs to play king e2 if they don't want to get checkmated, if, which, in which case, of course, they're completely lost. So they take our bishop, check, king up, forced, right? Check. And now here, this is checkmate, because we're going to play queen takes f2 next move, after either here or here. 
and king d3 it is pick your checkmate so so many um just brilliant brilliant lines here um and white loses in just every case i mean queen c1 I believe is another example of again just bishop b4 check and knight takes c3 is completely playable take the rook take the knight uh, and white is completely lost here so it's really just uh, such a brilliant position I'll, I'll note so I'll, i can give you one more line here so knight f3 uh like can be played if they want to maybe reinforce against this check because otherwise uh so there's a lot of things here that win but a3 i'll give you a, more of a taste of this position we can just play check and take again because our idea is really just to take that rook knight f3 is playable but again we can give this check and we can even trade everything on d2 uh, queen takes again allows us to take the rook but king takes allows us to go check we want the king to get in the way of this defense because that would allow us to take the rook but king e1 check and we take the rook in almost every line we are at least winning the rook if not the game on the spot but when we take the rook we take the knight we're going to be up a lot of material and white loses so in this position was was there anything that white could have done uh i mean 268 out of 274 people took the ruck and invited queen f6, which which really just wins the game. Uh, so knight takes d5 is interesting. It was played one time, so opens the queen onto here. However, black has a very good move, which was not found in this one time. It's queen a5 check, allowing us to take the knight next turn, uh, unless white blocks the check by playing knight back and a counter check. But here, just king back to e8. Uh, and really, white has no good defenses here. Rook d8, bishop c5, bishop b4, this is all coming. And white just has no defense around their dark squares. And again, is, is, is completely losing due to the captures on c3 uh, that are imminent. White has the best move in this position. It was found three times. Three times white plays here, knight f3. Somehow realizing, stopping after knight takes c7, realizing that they shouldn't be taking the rook. Uh, I'll, I'll show you this line, even though I don't think you're, you're going to face it. But here the point is, now we can uh, go after this bishop. Because this bishop is tied to the knight, and we just want to distract it. So g5. Just hurl everything at this bishop. Uh, if they take the rook now, we take this, and we're going to be collecting lots of material. And if white plays bishop back to g3, we can just take it. And remember, we haven't even sacrificed a piece, so in this position we are actually up a piece. So if white is really following all the stockfish recommendations, they might find knight takes g5, sacrificing the knight to be a play knight takes a8, which I think was the point of this, to be able to keep this bishop on the board for a second. And here, instead of queen takes a8, we play here queen f6. And here, I think this position is really just very, very difficult to play for white. Um, they might find this tough, tough move g3, but otherwise, this bishop's coming out into the game. Lots and lots of threats. Rook takes a8, black will have two pieces for the rook, uh, and very, very excellent compensation. I think this is a tough move to find, but but it appears to be a good one. So that was pretty much d takes e5. Um, e6, it's overwhelmingly played. Uh, and, and after bishop takes e6 here, all of a sudden, this is just not, not a good situation for white at all. They just fall right into our trap by taking here, taking the rook, and after queen to f6, they are going to lose. So that's really, really exciting stuff. Um, however, however, there is a major catch to this line, and it's that e6 is actually not the best move, even though it's overwhelmingly played in this position. White should find Stockfish's favorite move here, the very tricky queen takes d5. And I turned on Stockfish just to show you what you're dealing with here. So the point of queen takes d5 is that if we take back, they can take with check and take our queen next turn. Uh, in, in, in which case, if we go into this, they're up, uh, three pawns here <laughs> so that's not good so let's keep the pawn deficit at two and i will advise you guys to play the little played bishop to f5 developing another piece and we're holding our knight here so after bishop to f5 we still can't take the queen because knight takes c7 check we'll take back our queen however what we do want to play next is the move knight to b4 which would actually attack the queen and more importantly uh, attack c2 which can threaten mate in a lot of lines so let's continue to follow the most common moves for white, which is trading off the queens, making sense due to the fact that they're two pawns up, and snagging another pawn. They are now three pawns up, and we are going to play king d7. And now let's have a look at these knight retreats. So there is knight to b5, after which we will play bishop to c5, 
continuing to try to use our development advantage. Remember, in, in, in every line, white can't really cast along because their snake takes f2, which is going to be winning uh, one of the rooks here. And so they should play here e3. g5. We can now start to go after this bishop um, because they needed to play e3, which we provoked to hold f2. After g5, bishop needs to go back, h5. We can really try to trap this bishop, and now this is kind of a tough situation for white, because they don't want to play h3 or f3 in order to create a square, because we're going to trap it, so they need to try to create a square. But if they do that, now we're going to take it, and we're going to just take this pawn, and we're going to be using all of our pieces, taking lots and lots of more stuff. The best case scenario for white, I believe, is to actually allow h4, because they have this nice move e6 check, king takes... They can see now save their bishop by getting that pawn out of the way. And after rook d7, uh, this is an interesting position. Stockfish believes white can defend. Stockfish will always prefer the pawns. White is two pawns up, but here black has excellent, excellent compensation. There's g4 coming. There's a6 coming, which is going to make this knight move and take this bishop. There's knight b4 coming, which is going to be trying to take this pawn. And it's just a tough position for white to defend, I believe. So that's pretty much knight b5. Uh, bishop to c5 is a pretty forcing line, as you can see. Knight to d5 is also possible. And this might be a little bit more likely, actually. Because after king to c8, this knight uh, has to move in this position now. Again, white can't castle long, because the knight takes f2, is delivering a nice fork here. And if they move the knight, they're, they're actually in even more trouble. So bishop to b4, even though this knight actually attacks our bishop, we have these common ideas uh, in this line of being able to play knight takes c3 and this beautiful checkmate by giving a strong check along this diagonal. So here, white's only move would be pawn to c4, holding the knight here for a second, and it looks like white will be okay because they'll play f3, they're going to force our knight back, and they're going to castle their king and get in all their development. So we must strike quickly, and we will continue to do so. We are down three pawns, but it is not enough. Rook takes d5 takes this is just a really fun line that, that i really wanted to show you guys check okay bishop d2 is impossible we just take it so king d1 now we could play knight takes f2 check and go after this rook however the resulting position we're actually down some material here i believe down down at least some pawns we have a better move which is rook to d8 rook to d8 now threatening rook takes d5 against a very exposed king, but also at least threatening knight takes f2 and taking the rook, in which case we will be up one piece if we take the rook. So here, I believe most white players would probably play something like knight to h3. Something to hang on to their f2 pawn. And here begins a fun line that I wanted to share with you all. Rook takes d5 check. King to c1. So if king to c2, we have here... Knight takes f2. Check. If king back to c1. So opening up this bishop. If king back to c1, this is checkmate. If king to b3, we have rook c5. Threatening a couple of checkmates. <laughs> so, so if they take our knight, for example, this is checkmate. If they play rook to c1 to try and hold the c2 square, we have here bishop to e6. Check. And checkmate. <laughs> So king to c2 is impossible, and it walks right into the way of this bishop. So they can play here king to c1. However, we continue our sacrificial extravaganzas with knight to c3. An absolutely brilliant move. So we're threatening here rook to d1. And there's really not a lot that white can do about rook to d1, because this bishop is jammed in by its pawns in order to allow the rook to help defense. Uh, and if they play pawn take c3, we have checkmate with these bishops just working excellently together. And of course this rook. So they have one move to stop rook d1, and his bishop back to d2 to get in the way. But I will continue the checkmating patterns. Knight takes a2. With king d1, we have taking this bishop with check, and, and uh, checkmate coming, with all of our pieces working just so brilliantly together. So rook takes knight, bishop takes. Now these bishops are aligned. King to d1 forced. We come back, check. King c1 only legal move. We got rid of the one piece that they had that could defend it. So king c1, check. King d1 only legal move, check. King c1 only move. Now we go check here. Again, only move. Bishop d2 ends the game. <laughs> With rook c1 checkmate to follow, 
and just no defense at all for rook c1 this time, with all of white's pieces just completely out of play and doing nothing. I just love that line. I think it really demonstrated how well our pieces can work together when they're out, when they're all doing stuff, and really white's pieces are just not in the fight uh, at this point, or at least not enough of them are. So I thought that was just an absolutely brilliant line. Uh, another line here that's possible is pawn to e6 to try and save the knight. However, here we have the excellent move of not even taking the pawn, but just getting the king out of the way. King c8, it's a move we wanted to play anyway to, to unleash this rook. And here, actually, again, white is lost. So, like, for example, I mean, the, the only move, the, the only uh, game here was pawn takes f7, in which case we can play check. C, it wasn't even played, but c3 takes, and again, a checkmating sort of pattern that we've, that we've seen before, where this, this bishop and this rook just work very well together because this king is jammed in by its own pieces. Uh, otherwise, here we're actually just playing g5. So, like, let's say knight f3, which at least, like, could have helped to block. But here, g5 uh, can distract the bishop from this knight. Anytime we kind of have a free moment, we can try to play g5 to make this bishop move away from here. So, for example, now if it goes back, we can take it uh, and take the knight next turn at minimum and just be up lots of material. So, knight takes c7, not a good move. However, white did have a good move here. And three people found it. And all three white players who found it won the game. It is pawn to f3. Pawn to f3, resisting the temptation of another pawn, but just trying to drive our knight back so that they can play e4 and maybe actually start to get their pieces out and finally maybe enjoy enjoy their extra pawns w without, you know, getting checkmated all the time. And now I, I will show you what you're dealing with here because this is all the Stockfish recommendations. Stockfish does believe this is completely lost for black. But I just want to kind of underscore how maybe difficult it is for white to find all of these lines. So knight to b4. Knight to b4, we're going to leave our knight here and allow them to take it. Uh, white could play here. So white has two options that Stockfish thinks is very strong. Taking the knight and playing rook to c1 to defend against uh, knight takes c2 that we wanted to play. Of course we sacrifice. <laughs> rook takes c2. Check. So this knight is still here for one more moment to aid another very strong check. However, the key difference is that this knight is able to block. They didn't play knight takes c7, and the knight on b5 is actually able to come back and help save the day for them. But we play knight takes c3, and so we're still winning something here, because white should not play pawn takes c3, losing the rook like this. I should play rook takes c3 to get the maximum value for that. Takes, takes. Now this is all, all the stockfish recommendations here I would recommend to you. We're, we're in some weird position where now they have a bishop knight and a couple pawns for a rook, or one pawn, bishop knight and one pawn for a rook, which is quite the haul. Uh, and this is finding all the all the top defenses for white. White, white needed to find queen takes d5, they needed to find f3, they needed to find all this stuff. But here I would recommend bishop c2, so that e4, when e4 happens, it's not a big deal. So let's say e4. And now check. And now the, the idea is to maybe play rook a1, try and take this pawn. And here, I mean, white needs to know to like play knight e2 and just kind of let this pawn go. Because if they play bishop c4, all of a sudden things aren't nearly as good for them to try and hang on to that pawn. Because c6, b5, that bishop's going to have to move anyway. You see it's recommending just back bishop f1. Um, because rook takes a2 is coming. And also they're pinned over here. So I'm just saying, not that white isn't much better here. But we are going to take this pawn. We're going to castle our king. Things are pretty straightforward for us in trying to push this pawn. And like, white's better, but it's hard to realize that. Right, so like even if I kind of gave you the engine, <laughs> it, might, it might be hard to uh, actually make that work. So I don't think that's like, yes, technically it's a refutation, but I don't think that's like so resounding. And I th think, you know, you can still even win games from this position. White had one other move other than rook c1, which was pawn takes e4, which is probably an even more confusing refutation. <laughs> so knight takes e2 check. Let's follow this. So white played f3, and so they created an escape square here. And here we're going to actually play bishop takes e4 instead of taking that rook. So white here needs to keep their precious material with rook c1. Bishop to c5 check. And now here white needs to uh, play e3 after this check. Rook d2. And now there, after bishop to e2, we are going to play here g5. And this is another tough situation for white. So they can't play bishop to g3 because this is killer. They needed to be able to defend everything here. So bishop takes g5. But now after rook g8, things are very confusing for white. Because this is under attack. If you play like h4, I can just play h6. 
because what I want to do is take g2. It looks like this is very good for black, actually, because it's, it's such a hard position to hold. It's like, what are you even doing here? But I will turn on the engine and point out that this is what Stockfish loves. So it's like knight f3 to hold this, but it doesn't look like it holds it. However, you need to find the exact right moment to take on c7, which is this exact moment. And after king d7, because, so you didn't want to take it before because it just led to your knight hanging in a lot of lines, but it's like king takes f3, now we take this, and now white's like able to trade rooks or something, but not rook takes d1, but bishop takes d1. Uh, and, and at least it's some sort of confusing endgame, which uh, Stockfish thinks is much, much better for white. Uh, but this is, th this is the refutation. This is the, the, the scariest possible thing your opponent can do. And honestly, if they find all this, they were going to beat you anyway. So that is f3. Now I'll note f3 can be played in this position as well, but it shouldn't really change anything because here we play knight b4 anyway. And like I said, if they take this pawn, this is checkmate. So what they should do is actually take our queen and transpose into this position where they need to find several precise defenses in order to um, get to an endgame that they are able to win. So queen takes d5, I think, uh, is, it's, 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 it's an interesting sort of refutation in that it's not very clear. Um, and I will get to one more move, which is bishop takes e5. It is much less common than d takes e5 because a lot of people are excited to go d takes e5 and then get that pawn out of the way and be very excited about this. Uh, joining on c7. After bishop takes e5, it's not as exciting because black is able to play the most common move, which is getting rid of that bishop. However, I am recommending to you, <laughs> again, again, all the way down here, to bring the knight into e4. It's a good knight. It's a good knight. We are once again offering the c7 pawn. Once again, allowing them to play knight takes c7. So if they play bishop takes c7 here, just queen e7. Now there's queen b4 check winning the knight and a6 and if the knight moves we can take the bishop at minimum so bishop takes c7 shouldn't be played so knight takes c7 is played in d7 and they take our rook again oh no oh no <laughs> only this is an even easier trap than last time bishop to b4 check and now here they didn't even have like a bishop to help out they have nobody here to help out and the queen is gonna have to block so c3 knight takes c3 now here, if white plays pawn takes c3, after check, the queen really does have to block. And they will lose their queen and lose the game. However, after knight takes c3 here, white needs to move their queen and needs to be very precise about where they go. So if queen to d2, any knight move wins the queen. If queen to c1, this is check and winning the queen. So white here has queen to b3 or queen to c2. And queen to b3 allows us to play knight back to e4 check, defending the bishop here. So the king should move. We take here check. So it looks like now we're even. We each kind of took a rook over here and, and just some complete craziness going on in this position. What is even happening? I am going to advise you <laughs> to keep things crazy, not even take that rook, but play here queen to a5. Just getting that queen out into the game. Reinforcing our bishop here, defending uh, against queen takes d5. And basically white's, what black's plan is, is to slide the king out of the way, play bishop f5, play rook c8, and checkmate white on the c-file. That's what we're going to do. That is what we're going to do. So let's say here knight f3, which I think is most logical, because it against knight, knight takes e5, now there's knight takes, with the, which is check, and it allows white to maybe move the rook next turn. King e7. Just king e7. So now let's say like rook g1, after bishop to f5, all of a sudden white is already lost. So here it is it's really just rook c8 is coming in, and there's really nothing that white can do against uh, this file. I'll show you. I think it maybe it might take a second to figure this out. Bishop c7 doesn't change anything. We, we save our queen, and soon rook c8 will, or, or maybe we take the knight first, and then come back rook c8 to win the game. There's one really cool line here. So there's e3. Sorry, after king to e7, e3, let's say. Now we play bishop to f5. And now here white's like, okay, this, this is getting taken. Rook c8 is coming. I need to get this knight out of here. So they play knight c7. And we play rook c8 anyway. And they're like, okay, let me at least just take this. But I'm going to tell you that this is so, so strong that after knight takes d5 check, hitting our king here, defended by the queen, we are just going to sacrifice our queen. 
we're just going to sacrifice our queen because knight takes e5 here is check and we are covering every square around that king it is just gorgeous so all of our pieces are working in such brilliant harmony here bishop c4 is forced rook takes c4 queen takes this is, this is the only way to not lose immediately is to give the queen like this and here black is winning because white's king even though black has no more rooks or queens on the board white's king is, is just has no safety at all still so so let's so this rook needs to move in order for white to not be down too much material but let's say rook f1 allows knight d3 check and knight takes e3 winning the rook i can prove to you here that this is this is lost it's, it's crazy so rook g1 allows us to play yes knight takes e3 i believe is best uh and these pieces with knight d3 check coming it's it's all it's like almost checkmate and white needs to um we needs to at least give a rook here, but but I I just think these four minor pieces working together is just so brilliant, it's so poetic, and I, I just wanted to show you this line, which is I I think maybe one of my favorite uh, queen sacrifices. White's best bet is to try to counterattack our king by playing bishop takes g7. So rook over. We don't have rook c8 yet. They should play here queen to e3. We now need to pull our knight back. So we didn't get that rook after all, but now after they save our bishop, we play bishop f5. And it's, again, some sort of crazy position where we still want to attack the, the enemy king. Uh, we're going to pick up this knight. We're going to be attacking down the sea line. Uh, and I think Stockfish evaluates this to approximate equality. But, but I would not want to be the one having to play white here. And even now, evaluation is trending in our direction. There is actually one more option. And it's what this video was originally going to be about before I discovered uh, knight to e4 in this position. And the move here that black can play, if you're scared maybe about knight e4 that your opponent's going to find queen takes d5 and f3 and all these amazing defenses and you're scared of the big stockfish number, fine. The video was originally going to be about stockfish's recommendation, which was a6 here. And it's a very, very tricky move. So let's follow the most common lines first. So overwhelmingly people are playing e takes f6, just collecting this knight because it looks like after a takes b5, they can play again the next move here, f takes g7. Which, I mean, after any other move, black plays queen takes f6, let's say e3, queen takes f6, and of course, black has actually excellent development with all their pieces, even their rook is open, b2 is being threatened, and here black is doing quite, quite well. So f takes g7, and white's like, yes, I damaged black's kingside structure. However, here, black's pieces are doing phenomenal, because bishop takes b2 is a really severe threat. When this rook moves, that pawn's also falling, and we know when we take b2, it softens white for further checks along here. And so overwhelmingly here, white is playing pawn to c3, uh, which appears to be the most logical move to hold b2. But it's actually not a good one, and here, white's not doing well anyway. But c3, we can play this very strong strike immediately in the center, right? Not even giving them the time to finish their development around here. If they played knight f3, e3, got a chance to castle their king, if we gave them those few moves, they'd be fine. But this is the point. We strike quickly. d4. Threatening to play d takes c3. Mess everything up there. And white... Playing now c takes d4, queen takes. <laughs> we can get rid of maybe their, their, their one good defender around here. So queen takes, it's really just threatening too many things to let that queen hang around. And so white here plays queen takes. But after knight takes, actually white is already lost. And you can see I have 27 games. Black has won all 27. I don't think I've, I've actually ever seen something that pure. <laughs> but uh, this bishop is doing amazing. This rook is doing amazing. Playing a6 and a takes b5 did absolute wonders for our position because of this rook. And so knight c2 is coming. And really, there's there's not a lot of good things that white can do about that. So we can have a look here. Let's say uh, rook c1. We can even play knight e6. Bring that knight back tempo on the bishop. Playing bishop takes b2. Rook takes a2. At minimum, we'll, we'll collect those two pawns and really just push these. Make a queen. Win the game. And again, white. Absolutely no moves on this whole half of the board. With absolute... Uh, absolute savagery happening over here. There's going to be nothing left by the time those pieces awake awaken so that is a very very nasty trap it's not you're not quite the same as the other one but it's very very interesting and almost everybody's falling into that so people here need to know to actually move their knight and not play e takes f6 we can go to the less common moves i'll cover knight c3 and knight d4 i'll note knight takes c7 isn't helpful because after queen takes white will be losing a piece in this position so knight d4 we'll cover first but here is not a good choice because we can trade 
And after knight to e4, we still get our knight to that beautiful e4 square. And white's pieces are, again, not doing well at all. Because bishop to c5 is coming, and f2 is going to be hanging once that queen moves. And so even if a move like e3, which should save white, bishop c5, okay, the queen can retreat now. You're not going to lose f2. The bishop's now a problem. So let's say just like pawn c5, drive the queen back, g5. We can go after this bishop, use this idea h5. So we're, we're using this idea again. We want to play h4 here. Uh, which would trap the bishop, so they need to move one of these pawns to create a square that the bishop can go back to. But after knight takes g3, their their, their structure is just completely horrendous, and uh, this is this is just an awful position for white to have to play. And really, they didn't have better choices here at all. So knight d4 is not a good choice for that reason. It draws the queen out. The best choice, not too common, knight c3, and here we play knight h5. So now we force the knight back to c3 and playing knight h5 attacking this bishop. And so now there's two moves I'll cover. Knight takes d5 and e3. If queen d2, the third most common move, you can see actually white's completely lost here after d4. So they need to be really careful because a lot of things they just end up lost because they have no pieces out that really help them much. But so okay, let's look at e3. It's another line they have to be very careful. So e3 actually attacked our knight. Takes, takes, bishop b4. And now... Another rough situation for white. They're not close to being able to castle, and so d4 is going to win the knight. When we have a pin piece, we want to attack that pin piece, because we can win it. So really nothing stops d4 other than, all of a sudden we have some games here. They, they really need to play a3, because after bishop a5, may, now maybe they can play b4. Otherwise, we're just going to win that knight. So b4, however, we play knight takes b4. We play knight takes b4, we take it. They need to defend. And now here, we can play d4, I think, right away. I think even better is like actually c5 <laughs> first uh and soon we'll play d4 we'll take the knight uh castle our king and they're actually really not close to castling and being able to get king safety the engine's recommending some weird move rook a4 so that the rook can sacrifice itself for that bishop but here i i would really not want to play white here they have no king safety and they're really not even going to be up material for for the time being um with no development as well so e3 i think that was one of stockfish's top choices the other was knight takes d5 Knight takes d5, grabbing a second pawn, and so it does technically hold everything together. That bishop is defended. However, black mu must, white must continue to be precise, because after bishop e6, that knight is attacked, and it can't move without losing a piece. So white should here find e4, holding the knight, attacking this. And so because our own knight is under attack, we need to uh, finally make that capture. And so here we're down two pawns, but after queen to e7, we have very, very excellent compensation. Uh, because our rook is going to come to d8, or we're going to even be able to castle long, hopefully. Lots of threats along here. White has no development. This pawn is toasted. Queen b4 check is coming. Going to take there or take here. So, for example, let's look at knight takes e6. We can run the engine a bit here. But after queen takes e6, let's say just knight f3. Knight takes. Rook is coming to d8. Bishop's coming out. King's coming castles. Everything's very, very pleasant for uh, black to be able to play. If they don't do that first in knight f3, then queen b4 check. And here they run into all sorts of problems, because when the knight blocks, that allows us to castle. Lots and lots of pressure. So there really isn't a fun option here for white. They, they, they needed to somehow struggle to defend one of these positions. Uh, and that was really covers a6. So a6, I think, is actually like a very, very sound response. But I don't think anything is really going to top knight e4, which is why I made it the focus of this video. Knight e4, it passes the Lee Chess Challenge, which I have another video on right above me right now but where in every single one of white's most common moves from knights to c3 on move two ends up in a completely losing position bishop to g3 and in fact this is my best solution to the lee chess challenge yet because it is a 12 move checkmate following the most common moves and so i made that the focus of this video because i just thought that line was so so fun so there's the a6 line there's the knight e4 line it is up to you but Neither one of them are named, so I'm looking for name suggestions. Let me know your thoughts on, on name suggestions and anything else in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Thank you guys so much, and have a fantastic day. Peace out, Gambit lovers.